Hello guys, Adam here from Switch Indie Fix and I am bringing you episode 16 of the Switch Indie Fix podcast. It's a rather dark and cold Sunday afternoon here in Vienna and this week I am bringing you all the latest indie game news on the Nintendo Switch and we are going to be talking about the kind of funny games uh, showcase which happened on Saturday night. So yeah, if you don't know guys, this week was the Game Awards and the kind of funny show, uh, the final kind of funny show daily showcase <laughs> or the kind of funny game showcase i should say so there has been a lot of um a lot of indie news released this week what i've actually done is um split some of the news up uh, from the game awards i put that in in our usual section in the news section and the actual kind of funny uh, games showcase i have put into the conversational portion as you can probably tell if you're watching the video on youtube uh, or you're watching the podcast on youtube i have a, a different back setting i'm actually in my kitchen today so if, if the sound if it sounds a little bit off as well for you audio listeners, uh, there might be like a slight echo. But uh, if not, then um, yeah, maybe you didn't even know. But yeah, I'm, I am in my kitchen. I've been relegated here because the, the girlfriend's at home. And also for you audio, uh, your visual uh, watchers, I have a kind of funny games daily t-shirt on, which is uh, quite fitting for today's episode. So let's get on with the episode. Um, yes, so as always, we'll just start off with a little bit of... Uh, uh, housekeeping actually this week we aren't recording on instagram uh, i, I kind of gave it a miss this week because um my usual schedule is kind of mixed up but uh next week or the next time we re record an episode make sure you um go over to instagram forward slash instagram.com forward slash switch indie fix and you can watch along live you can ask me questions live uh, that'd be awesome if you have instagram to, if you go over there and give me a follow um plus i always need your questions for the for the show uh, if you don't know, if you're a new listener, section three of the show, the final segment is always a question segment, which means I need your questions. Uh, they can be about indie games, they can be about Nintendo in general, they can be about uh, me and my kind of like uh, video game preferences and habits. Uh, so yeah, if you have questions, just go to switchindiefix.com forward slash SIF podcast. So let's get on with section one of the show, which as always is the news. Do 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 do. And this week we have five items on the list. That's half a baker's dozen. Obviously, there is going to be a lot more in the kind of funny games showcase. Uh, but these five, I, I kind of found uh, that they they were kind of big indie news, and they weren't part of the showcase. So, number one is Donut County is is coming to Switch very very soon. Uh, so, arguably one of this year's most eagerly anticipated and beloved indies is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Donut County has you play, playing as a sneaky raccoon who controls an ever-growing hole. You, as the cheeky raccoon, need to solve puzzles to get as many items in the hole as you can, even if it means stealing a few things from the neighbouring village. Donut County will be released on the Switch on December 18th, which is really, really soon. Like I said, uh, I think today's the 8th when I'm recording, so it's only 10 days away. Um, I know from our community, the Switch Indie Fix community over on Discord, that um, Donut County is one of the... Yeah, definitely the most anticipated game, indie games coming to the Switch. Um, it has like a big follow, like a big cult following on Steam and on on mobile. Um, everyone that I've heard that's played the game has really enjoyed it, and it's kind of like yeah, a puzzle game where you control a you you are, you are like a raccoon um, that is basically trying to steal items, and you have a hole that starts off small. So obviously, at the beginning, you can only get small items into your hole, and as your hole slowly grows bigger, you need to still steal um, bigger items. The, the kind of like what one of the most famous things about the game is like its sense of humor like it has a very dark uh dark sense of humor the the kind of slogan or catchphrase for the game is uh, have a garbage day which you know is for the raccoon is like have a right great day because raccoons eat garbage but for the rest of the the village that he lives in it seems really really rude and um I, yeah i've heard the game's really fun i've i've heard it's quite short and it's like definitely one on my list that I, i'm going to be playing over christmas so i'm looking forward to the game coming to the nintendo eShop. uh number two is that indie games win big at the game awards so yes if you watched uh jeff Keeley's uh game awards on thursday night or like very early thursday morning for me here in vienna uh you'll you'll know that indies did win a lot of uh, awards as well as some obviously the big triple a ones um, so yeah, last last Thursday was Jeff Keighley's Game Awards, the biggest and most prestigious award ceremony in the whole of gaming. At the perfectly executed show, indie games were winning big. So first up was Celeste, which won Best Independent Game, which um, I don't think was a surprise. And it also won the Games for Impact Award, which is like a game that tries to address uh, like social challenges or mental challenges. Uh, if you've played Celeste, you'll know exactly why the game 
won that award, which is really cool to see uh, Indies getting, or it's to see Celeste get two awards. It was, it was even up for Game of the Year award too, uh, but that went to Game, uh, what was it, to God of War, which, uh, yeah, it wasn't a surprise. Um, Dead Cells also did well. It picked up the best action game. Uh, the Messenger picked up the best debut indie game. And Overcooked 2 managed to beat uh, Mario Tennis Aces and Mario Party to win the best family game award, which is pretty impressive. I think most people thought Mario Party was going to win. Uh, but oops. <laughs> but it was, um, uh, yeah, Overcooked 2, which is uh, very cool to see an indie game beating, uh, yeah, Nintendo's, two, two of Nintendo's big first party games. Um, furthermore, shockingly, Florence, which is a kind of... Uh, it's a mobile, like a very indie. It's an indie mobile game uh, where you. It's it's kind of like a almost like a a moving picture book, if you know what I mean. There's not like that much gameplay to it, but apparently the story is really, uh, very like deep and emotional. And uh, yeah, I've only heard good things about it. I've been waiting until it gets announced to come to the Switch to play it. But it actually won the best mobile, uh, game award, beating Fortnite Mobile and PUBG Mobile, which uh, yeah is pretty pretty impressive considering those games how huge those games are this year and how well epic have managed to get fortnite to run on them on on mobile phones so that's pretty cool to see was definitely a shock and into the breach shook off fierce competition to win the best strategy game so yeah it's uh, nice to see indie games kind of slowly working their way into more mainstream um circles you know these these indie game awards uh, sorry these these game awards they they usually focus a lot on uh, AAA games, you know, EA, um, Ubisoft, like PlayStation, Sony Entertainment, and Xbox. They they they're mostly there for that because those those games bring in the crowds that that Jeff Keighley needs to to keep funding the, the game awards. Um, but yeah, it's still awesome to see Celeste, Dead Cells, Overcooked Two, The Messenger, Florence, and um, Into the Breach getting some mainstream kind of limelight, and hopefully, you know, people getting um, getting switches you know if they bought them in black friday or if they're picking them up for christmas this year maybe hearing about these games via the game awards and checking them out uh, that's always good to see indie games doing well and maybe even selling well too so um number three which also came news came from the game awards is that bonus xp and the creators of uh, the stranger things tv series the duffer brothers are bringing a stranger thing uh announced a stranger things game um so yeah this was really kind of like a shock i was actually i actually thought it was like a joke you know it was just kind of like um i guess it is been used as like a marketing tool to to um market and promote the stranger things uh third season but yeah they kind of the duffer brothers kind of came out on stage and 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 out kind of showed this game off and i was like ah, oh, that's kind of cool that they they've made like this kind of video in the in the the shape or not the shape but in the style of a 16-bit retro game uh, but it was actually a real thing so that was uh really cool um yeah so they announced it it's like a throwback to late 80s and early 90s games it has a 16-bit art style it looks like the gameplay is going to be mostly like brawler kind of gameplay you know a lot of like beat em up kind of go into a room enemies come in you hit them with weapons uh, throw them around the room and then move on to the next one um, the theme of the game it fits perfectly into Star um, Stranger Things is setting you know at the end like the the eighties the first season was about Dungeons and Dragons the second season was about the arcade and this n next season seems like it's going to be about video games so yeah I'm sure they're going to tie it in somehow to the the season three of the the series and um, yeah it's actually tied into season three so I believe it's set after the events of season three so yeah I think that's pretty cool news it's uh, exciting news for. Uh, Stranger Things fans like it's cool in kind of pop culture that Netflix a Netflix series is is now producing its own game you know it might end up being like it was in the 90s where everything had like a, a video game tie-in uh, like I hope it doesn't get to that but um, yeah I think Stranger Things is, as a franchise is is very like strong and popular right now like people are, are very like they're hungry for the third season of the of the series so yeah, it might be like a good uh, a good way for the game to do well, a good way for the series to do well, and um, bonus XP. I believe they're quite like a well known indie developer, so it's cool that they are making this game. And yeah, let's see what happens. Maybe we'll get like a a Witcher tying game when that comes to Netflix, or yeah, I don't know, whatever whatever games uh, like Netflix is or whatever series Netflix is doing. Maybe they'll be getting games too. Um, I actually saw that the Minecraft story mode, the, the Telltale one was on Netflix now, so you can actually play it 
a video game through your TV. Um, because, yeah, it's just a Telltale game. It's just narrative. I guess they put it on there for kids mostly. So that'd be like kind of interesting to see how you play it. Like, um, I guess, yeah, you play it with like your PlayStation controller if you're watching on your PS4. But if you're watching through like a smart TV, do you just use like your remote control? Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to think about. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to see what Netflix are doing with kind of their series and their entertainment and their streaming service. So yeah, let's keep an eye out on the Stranger Things free game. Story number four is that Warframe has sold, no, sorry, Warframe has over 1 million players on the Switch. So yes, only af after a few weeks, uh, sorry, let me start again. Yes, only a few weeks after its launch, Warframe has already over 1 million players. Uh, the, the news was revealed earlier on Twitter this week by Digital Extremes, the game's developer and publisher. Um, I think it's really cool that Warframe uh, is, is doing well on the Switch. Obviously, it's free, so it's going to have a lot of, I think people downloading the game like I, I I don't know I guess this is how many people have downloaded it uh, there was no kind of information about how many people then played the game after downloading it or how many minutes uh, each individual player played um, but it's cool to see that people are trying out the game like I talked about on the last episode uh, I, I'm really loving Warframe like I think it's a fantastic game I can't believe it's free uh, my review of it is going up sometime next week so keep an eye out for that it's a uh, it's a very it's kind of like half review half um guide to the game so if if you are thinking about um downloading warframe or you are uh, you've just started playing it and you're a little bit overwhelmed with some of the the features and some of like pretty much what you're supposed to do in the game uh, keep an eye out for the review because yeah i try to to um to help some new players out there and uh, yeah yeah it's it's definitely a great game it, it it's surprisingly um it's surprising how well it runs on the switch it's surprising how good it looks on the switch uh, panic button They've done a fantastic job of porting it, and I'm glad to see it's getting some success. Um, it'd be interesting to see the ratio of like downloads to spending in the game, because like I've I've played it for over thirty hours now, and and I've had like no. I feel like the the way they monetize it, it's not like so in your face. Like there's no pop ups or anything to get you to spend money. So it'd be interesting to see how much money they have made off these one million players uh, already. Like I I hope for digital extremes, it's a lot. Like eventually i i will be buying something in it just to kind of say thank you and and you know it's it's definitely like the quality of a 60 dollar game and you're getting it for free so yeah i definitely think well, I'll, I'll i'll be buying some cosmetics or buying a warframe in it but i'd really like to see how much uh, money they've made in these first couple of weeks too but i, I doubt they're gonna uh, they're gonna share that and sorry video listeners i'm looking at my hair it looks like a total mess so i'm just trying to tidy it up but it's yeah it's not really working and finally, story number five is Campo Santo confirms fire, the Firewatch release date. So after teasing months ago that they were they were bringing their critically acclaimed game Firewatch to the Nintendo Switch, Campo Santo finally settled on a release date for the game, and it's soon. You can pick up Firewatch on your Switch on December 17th, and it will cost $19.99. So it's a perfect game to play over Christmas break. Uh, yes, it is. It's a game I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing. I've not actually played Firewatch. I know some people have probably played it on Steam and then on Xbox, and, and now they're considering buying it on the Switch. But um, yeah, it's it's not a game I've played. It's a game I've heard a lot about, and uh, it's one I'm excited. To, yeah, like I said, to play over the Christmas break. Um, they said in November that they were very close to confirming the release date, and now they have. So it's nice to know it's coming. And um, yeah, I know Campo Santo. They just got bought by Valve. So that could be like a reason why it's taken a little bit longer than people expected for us to get a release date. But it's cool that the the game is coming out in like less than two weeks. So yeah, if you're if you're like into kind of walking simulators or narrative driven games, then I think Warframe is definitely one for you. And yeah, that was the news this week. The, like I said, those five stories were the kind of the, the biggest ones I found outside of the kind of funny games showcase. So let's start section two of the game of the game <laughs> of the episode which is, of course, our conversation portion. And like I said, most of the portion is going to be talking about the Kind of Funny Game Showcase. So if you don't know what Kind of, fun, the, what kind of Funny is or what the Kind of Funny Game Showcase is, Kind of Funny are basically like um, they're a, a, a podcasting business uh, that is based around video games. Um, it was set up in 2015 by Greg Miller and Corey, Colin Moriarty and like uh, I think Tim Gettys and Nick Scarpino. And... Um, yeah, they're kind of like a rags to riches story. They they all left IGN, set up their set up their own company, 
uh, making podcasts uh, and they were doing it in one of the guys like spare bedrooms and then like three years later now they they have their own studio in san francisco and they have produced this kind of funny game showcase and the kind of premise of the showcase was that usually in december we have uh, the game awards midweek and then on the saturday after the game awards is always psx which is the playstation experience um this year because you know it's like the tail end of the playstation 4 era um sony said that they didn't really have anything to show this year uh, or at least not enough to put on a, a convention or a presentation just for for sony games so back in september uh, when that news broke greg miller who runs the kind of funny games um daily show which is the t-shirt i've got on he said that they were going to do their own showcase on the same night as PSX, that PSX should have been on. Um, so yeah, that kind of off the cuff remark then led to like lots and lots of people emailing him, um, especially indie devs uh, emailing him wanting to be part of the showcase. So skip forward, what, three months? And yeah, the showcase was on Saturday night here in, in Vienna. Um, so yeah, they, they planned to have, I think they said they had over 67 games that they showed in just, just over an hour, uh, which is pretty incredible. Uh, they were kind of, you can tell that they were very like heavily inspired by like Nintendo Directs and, um, like Sony's presence, that Sony's presentations, you know, where it's a lot of, um, montages, a lot of kind of like quick in and out of games, uh, not too much speaking, not too much, uh, like, I don't know baggage onto the, the 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 showcase like they did have like a developer talk from one of from ea's developers about anthem and they actually decided to cut it out and put it as its own separate video because it just slowed down the pacing which um yeah i kind of appreciated um and yeah the quality of the games they definitely range like some were very like you know the first game they announced was super meat boy forever which as an indie goes is very high top quality top tier uh, they also had like i said some news from anthem they had some news from sega um and yeah what i've basically done is as i was watching i was typing down most of the indie games that i thought looked cool and are coming to switch some of them aren't, uh, did they didn't have a switch release date or or specifically say they were coming to the switch but i thought i'd, I'd write them down to um to just kind of talk about because they look great so i have a list of 37 games which is uh <laughs> like pretty pretty incredible like i said there were 60 67 so 30 games that i didn't even mention um and yeah like i said before the first one was super meat by forever uh it got its first kind of like release window uh was announced it that it'd be coming in april 2019 to the switch uh, we didn't get a specific date. It just was slated for April, which is pretty cool. So it's not too long to wait for uh, Team Meat fans and Super Meat Boy fans. Um, I noticed from the 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 kind of uh, trailer that it introduces two at least two new mechanics. That there's there's a punch mechanic, which you can use to kind of like uh, jump, hit an enemy punch, and then that like springboard you on again. So it's like almost like a double jump, and uh, a slide mechanic that lets you like kind of slide and punch, like or slide dash under um under obstacles so yeah that's uh pretty cool so like an, another well two at least two new mechanics for people to master not just the platforming but these these things add it and obviously are going to change it enough to make it different from super meat boy uh, and the story this time around is that um, meat boy and bandage girl's child is is abducted by dr fetus so uh, yeah it basically just looks like super meat boy but on steroids the second game uh that they showed was called i think it's pronounced yeek a postmodern rpg it's spelt y i i k but the way they the font they used was really weird because the y the i i looked like a u so i think it's pronounced yeek um yeah it came out with a release date january 17th 2019 so you know the start of next year um it looks like it has very traditional like almost jrpg like mechanics uh, with like turn-based combat however unlike a jrpg it's actually set in the 90s and seems to have like a very psychedelic uh, story there's like a lot of bold colors being used the art style looks really interesting it kind of looks like a modern version of playstation 1 graphics like very uh, polygon like a lot of polygons a lot of kind of bold but um what's the word like very bold colors but they aren't they're just very like what's so yeah i can't really explain it you need to look at the 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 trailer to see like you'll understand what i mean how the colors they they contrast very very like d 
differently to colors now like there's not a lot of depth to them it's like okay here's just like a, a really bright red here's like a really bright yellow but it, it all together it looks really cool um so yeah uh, that's definitely one i'll be checking out in january the next game announced was at sundown which is kind of like a i think it has 4v4 multiplayer um it's coming out on january the 22nd uh next year so again another game that's not so far away um yeah and it's basically like you're in 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 a map and it's a like a shooter where you're running around and you're trying to kill your friends um but you're like there's like a fog on the map so when you're in the fog your friends can't see where you are so a lot of it is like sneaking waiting for for someone to walk around a corner and then like kind of shooting them so um yeah it looks like kind of like a fun party game um and yeah like i said comes out january the 22nd uh the next one is to jam and earl back in the groove which is like the worst kept secret i think ever um this one was actually leaked before the the release date was leaked before the showcase so it's coming out march 1st 2019 uh, so i guess if you have nostalgia for Toad jam and earl um i think they came back at, they were out on the the sega mega drive back in the day so if, if you want some 90s and nostalgia that's uh definitely where to go and that's kind of like a theme i noticed about the showcase but it was very like 90s nostalgia based like it's getting kind of worrying for me that uh 90s now is like you know what i guess what 80s was like 10 years ago like everyone is kind of like arcing back to the 90s because 90s kids are all getting now into their 30s and uh yeah, it's kind of worried for me, worrying for me because it makes me feel old. <laughs> uh, the next one, an another big game announcement was uh, from Biffle Studios, another Biffle short uh, called Quarantine Circular, which is out right now. Uh, it was released then on the showcase. Um, so yeah, Mike Biffle is a big supporter of Kind of Funny. He was one of the first devs to kind of support them when they went independent. Um, Quarantine Circular, it looks a lot like Subsurface Circular. Like I guess it's built in the same engine. It's basically like a, a narrative text adventure um subsurface subsurface circular i reviewed it you played like a robot that was traveling on the underground and was searching for missing people and and it's basically like um yeah you have like uh a conversation tree and you're basically looking for like keywords so you, you ask a question about the missing person uh someone gives an answer they have like a keyword that you need you take that keyword and then it's like okay now i go and ask this person who was acting strangely you use a keyword and maybe they give you like, like a little bit of information that progresses the story along uh yeah and um yeah uh what's it called quarantine circular um is another biffle shot so it's like a game that they, they try and turn around as quickly as they can uh just to like pump a little bit of money into their company whilst they produce something bigger so uh yeah it's out right now on the switch um i think subsurface circular was like six or seven dollars so it's pretty pretty cheap game subsurface circular was really good and i'm, I'm definitely going to check out quarantine circular uh, it, it seems to be like an end of the world um, dystopia set in, I guess, about some disease that's got out and you're kind of trying to find out who is um, who is responsible for that. So, yeah, definitely interesting. And now I'm just taking a sip of tea. Ah, perfect. Next was a very uh, a different in announcement. Uh, it's called Adam's Ascending. Uh, and, yeah, it was basically a live action video. Um or a live action trailer about like a I guess it's from the from the trailer it seemed very much like a almost like a roguelike like you you seem to play as like a an astronaut that lands on a on a unusual planet and in the trailer the um the guy basically goes into a cave dies and then respawns in the same spot so like I'm I, that's why I get these like roguelike feelings to it um but art wise like it looks very uh let's just say indie in like every sense like it even the trailer i know it's, it's it's made by one guy like it's really impressive what he did especially with the the live trailer uh but it does look very like alpha build um and kind of gave me like a no man's sky kind of art style feeling like it's in like third person you have like this kind of um 70s looking astronaut there and and this like kind of open worlds and and giant skeletons and stuff so yeah it's definitely a, a an interesting looking game and they were actually announcing that their their Kickstarter is live. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. If if you if you check out Adam's Ascending, and you can go and support them and back them on Kickstarter. Next up was Moving Out by SMG Studios, who who brought us Death Squared and Super Super One Jump. Was it called Super One More Jump? Uh, Moving Out is basically like a if you imagine it looks a bit like if you imagine Overcooked, but instead of cooking, you were are like a moving company. 
so you and friends can like work together to get furniture out of a house uh get it get it across like dangerous ter terrain and uh yeah like overcooked it has kind of like like ridiculous cute art style um looked really interesting there was no release date but it did say it was coming to the switch so um yeah smg studios are great great guys great developers and i'm excited to see what moving out's about next up was uh operence operencia the stolen stun sun uh, and i kind of quoted that it's reality embraces fantasy it was like a first person i guess like rpg um it's coming in 2019 it it kind of gave me vibes of um you know like skyrim in some ways like you're using it's first person you lose using a lot of magic um and yeah it looked interesting maybe not for me but uh yeah definitely something to watch out for in 2019 next up was golf blitz uh they announced that you can sign up for their beta right now um on i guess on on steam yeah golf blitz the it was like a funny looking trailer like again like a live action one but it didn't really give you any information about what the game is like i guess it's like a mini golf simulator or some some kind of like ridiculous golf simulator but yeah it wasn't the best way to show it i thought at the the showcase number 10 is motorball uh it's basically literally uh 2d top down rocket league which um if you're i don't know bored of rocket league maybe then motorball would uh would be up your street Number 11 was Lapis X Labyrinth, uh, which is like a Japanese action J RPG. Uh, looks like total chaos, like the gameplay, I had no idea what was going on. There was just like a stack of people all stood on top of each other, bouncing into enemies. And then there was like match three puzzles coming up and then like all these like numbers from, from damage coming up. It looked, yeah, kind of weird, like all these like chibi guys fighting. Um, so yeah, it's coming to the Switch in 2019. It will also get a physical limited edition for anyone who's interested in that. So yeah, if you like these kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, Japanese RPG action adventure games, then you should check out Lapis X Labyrinth. Next up was a pretty cool announcement is that the Messenger is getting free DLC. Uh, the DLC is called Picnic Panic and it's coming in 2019 and it will add three new levels um so yeah cool for the messenger fans people who finish the messenger it's set in like a uh it's supposed to be like the ninja holiday so whereas the messenger i thought looked quite dark and bleak like this new setting is like beaches and sand and obviously on the beach and like blue turquoise water so um yeah it's cool that it's free for messenger owners messenger owners and i think the game's on sale right now as, as well as some of the other games that were announced uh sorry some of the other games that won awards at, at the the game awards so yeah it might be time for me to pick up um the game number 13 one of the really like for me personally as a kind of funny fan uh really cool announcements is that kind of funny outfits are going to be in guacamole 2 uh, you can basically get the shirtless arachnid person uh which is like a, a meme referencing the shirtless spider-man that, that the kind of funny guys created and then managed to get into the new spider-man game on ps4 um, to claim it, if you have the game on PS4 and Steam, you can do it right now. You just go to the costume shop and type in uh, on the D-pad, down, down, up, up, right, left, right, up, left. And you can get it. And it says that it's coming soon to the Switch. Um, I think Guacamole 2 comes out on the sec on the 7th. The 7th, which was yet today. So maybe that's wrong. But I think it comes out next week on the Switch. So um yeah, if I pick it up, then I'll definitely be doing that because you get, yeah, shirtless arachnid man and Portillo the sausage dog, which are, yeah, very, they're kind of funny references. If you don't watch kind of funny or listen, you won't get it. Next up was number 14, When Ski Lifts Go Wrong. It's coming in 2019 to the Switch. And it, the easiest way to describe it is like, if you've ever seen Bridge Constructor, uh, it's basically that, but instead of building bridges, you're building ski lifts and ski, ski jumps. Um, it, I thought it was a really cool trailer that they made, uh, very funny um and yeah like if you're into like these kind of physics building games then it's, it might be for you uh yeah ski lifts go wrong next up was number 15 rival mega gun gun it's a shmup and it's getting a physical switch edition um so i believe it's already out on the switch now but if you're into physical games then you might want to want to consider getting that too speaking of which limited run also announced that physical copies are coming for wind wind jammers on december 21st and celeste on on january 1st and both are for the switch so if you're excited for the for wind jammer jammers coming up and you're or you're a big fan of celeste or you haven't played it yet like me then you might want to consider getting the physical editions from limited run
Number 17 was uh, some news from Humble Bundle. They announced Minico's Night Market is coming in early 2019. This was on, I think, the last Nindy Direct or whatever it's called. What, what's it called? Nindy Highlights or something. Where, yeah, you play like this girl who comes to an island in Japan that's overrun by cats and sets up like a night market. And yeah, it, it was like a really cute um, looking game, really nice art style. Uh, it's definitely one I'm going to pick up. Uh, so yeah, I was excited to see, hear more news about that. And another really exciting game is Slay the Spire, which is like a rogue card-like game uh, where, yeah, you, you're trying to like, you, you collect cards to fight enemies to, and then you kind of climb like a tree to uh, get to a boss and hopefully slay the spire, get to the top of the spire. Another great game, which I'm really excited for, and that is coming in 2019. Next up was actually a game that wasn't announced for the Switch, but I wanted to talk about it because I thought it looked so cool. Um, was Long Days Gone. Uh, it had like really stunning pixel art. You play as like, the story at the start was like, ever since I was born, I knew I always, no, I always knew I wanted to be a sniper. And I, and I kind of thought, Okay, that's like a weird uh, thing to know when you were born. But um, yeah, like it looks interesting. Like I said, the, the art style was, was great. It looks like it's a very story-driven RPG, uh, like very Japanese. And it's coming out to Steam on April. But like I said, there was no Switch news yet. But um, yeah, it's one I really hope comes to the Switch. Next up was Away Journey to the Unspected. Uh, it has like a really cool looking cartoon slash anime art style. Uh, you meet and befriend new creatures and then when you befriend them you get to play as them so uh every every creature is different it's it was first person it kind of reminded me a little bit of like uh almost like a bullet hell like it seemed like there was a lot of cr people on the screen that you're trying to fight against and you're having to dodge bullets and interestingly enough it was actually developed in france but all the art is done in japan and the game will be coming to switch on february 7th which is one week after my birthday number 20 was vain um, and when I saw it, I got really excited because I thought it was Play Dead's next game. Um, it looks very and has like the, a very Play Dead feel, like dark, uh, kind of dark. What's the word? A dark atmosphere with like a protagonist that you don't, you can't really tell. It's obviously human, but it has no like features, and there's like a bird in it, and yeah, that looks really interesting. Um, I didn't write down if it was coming to the Switch or not, but yeah, Vein, it looked pretty cool. Next up, one um, I'm I'm like really really excited to play is called Bury Me, My Love. It's coming January 10th to the Switch, and it's like a text-based game based on uh, the journey of Syrian refugees. So from the the the, the trailer, it, it basically got the impression that like a couple had separated from in Syria. One one guy had stayed in the the, the guy had stayed in Syria. The girl had gone to try and come to the West or come to Europe. And it's basically them texting backwards and forwards at the start. Like it, it started off not too bad, but you can kind of tell that it's going to get pro progressively worse. And the next, the name suggests, you know, one of them is going to die. I guess it's the guy in Syria. Um, and yeah, and it's like you're basically, you're doing like text over the phone. So uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, I've been, I kind of looked it up afterwards and yeah, I thought it, thought it looked really nice again. Game style, the, sorry, the art style looks really nice. And yeah, I'm excited to play it on January 10th. It's actually on sale right now on, on Android and iOS for like 99 cents. So if you want to pick it up now early and play it on your phone, then you can do that too. Uh, next up was uh, Slime Sand Creator. It's available today on Steam. It's, uh, yeah, if you know Slime Sand, it's like the the, the platformer by Fabraz. And he actually is, has built a, uh, a creating tool for it. So if you want to make your own levels in Slime Sand, you can do that now. Then at number 23 was Double Cross, which they described as Mega Man meets Phoenix Wright and is coming in 2019. 24 was Devil Engineering. 25 was Reverie, which is coming to Switch in January or Feb, February. Uh, Reverie, I actually already played on the Nintendo Switch. It's like a, a Mother 2 slash Mother 3 kind of, or it's heavily inspired by Mother 2 and Mother 3, uh, but it's set in New Zealand. So it has like this kind of whimsical um story based around maori legends and uh yeah like it, it, then it has like all this like uh, kiwi folklore and kiwi kind of um what's the word not culture but it's very obviously you can tell it's made in new zealand if you've been to new zealand a really cool game on the vita and i can't wait to play it on the switch and uh yeah knife boy was also announced and it was called a solo developed action game spice with rpg elements looks very unusual has like a 
a very unique looking art style which kind of reminded me of uh, attack on titan like it seemed like the enemies like the guy was heavily inspired by them a lot of them were like big naked and had like huge grins um so it looked really cool and it's about a guy that is murdered and he kind of comes back from hell as an, a boy with a knife on his head and he kind of goes on like a, a rampage to try and find his murderer so yeah that was a, a kind of weird looking game but um yeah still looks cool and uh it's it's slotted for quarter two of of 2019 for the switch and again i'm just gonna drink some tea so next up is multiplayer games uh the first one was log jammers which uh i don't know if it has anything to do with wind jammers but it literally looked like wind jammers but you're like balancing on logs and throwing wood at each other and um they kind of put it as it could come out now anywhere between now and january which was a uh, kind of funny so keep an eye out on the eShop for when it comes out then next up was turbo lance coming in 2019 and then wreck out which was again i think it it looked a lot like um like yeah a 2d top down rocket league but it was like one on one so uh oh is that something different no wreck out sorry no wreck out was like 4v4 car combat where you have to like crash your car into each other and um when the driver f drive falls out, you have to then like hit the driver to get points and stuff like that. So yeah, kind of cool party game. Uh, next up was number thirty, which I think this story also this date also got uh, released was Ape Out, which has been published by developer uh, sorry Devolver Digital. It's coming to the Switch on February seventh. You you basically it's, it's like a roguelike like that you play as an ape escaping a um, like a science lab. And you're trying to make your way to the bottom floor and 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 out into freedom, uh, but you're kind of having to fight off security guards and police. And it's the the way they made it is like the art style is very, is like very minimal but very like, uh, very like visual. Like when you throw like a guy against the wall, he basically turns into like a blood splat. And the the sound or the sound design is very kind of like, um, it's not very traditional. So it's like, I think the sound is created by the actions of the ape. So if you throw a guy into a, a window, like the sound is then like the window smashing. Like there's no, there's no backing track to it. It's basically you make up the sound as you, that you make up the track as you go along creating havoc. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, again, uh, a really cool looking game. Um, comes out again the week after my birthday. Then next up was Fight Night, which comes out, Fight Night, it's a night with a K, which comes out spring in, uh, in spring 2019 um this was like a first person dungeon crawler where you you are a knight that you kind of fight and it kind of looked like you had um almost like punch out like mechanics like you could just see the guy's arms and and i guess there's like different moves you can do with the arms and like it, it was kind of like ridiculous looking like there was one where he threw like an american football at a guy and and like a fish and and stuff like that so um yeah it was definitely interesting a different an interesting art style too um yeah so maybe check that out on youtube Number 32 was called Tunsha. Um, it's Kickstarter launches in Jan on January 14th. Um, yeah, this again was, there wasn't much to the video. Like I imagine, I think they kind of had a, a longer video that they, they cut out. Um, but it looks like you play like this group of kids that all have magical abilities. Well, not even kids, but these group of people that all have magical abilities. But the art style it was very like cartoony, like it looked like a, a Cartoon Network cartoon. Um, and yeah, I, I guess I don't know the best way to describe what the gameplay looked like like, like kind of like a combo like brawler almost um but like I said it, it the art style was very like bright and yeah it just looked like an interesting game so I'm interested to see um see more about it when the kickstarter starts on January 14th uh number 33 was Supermarket Shriek by Billy Goat Entertainment they're the guys that uh, developed uh, Her Majesty's Spiffing, which is like a point and click adventure game. Supermarket Shriek, it's like a, you know, back in the 90s, they had that, t was it Supermarket Dash or something, where people would go with, with supermarket trolleys and they'd run, they'd have a certain time to run around the supermarket, put as much um, goods in the trolleys as they can. And then if they get to the end of the, to the cash register and like it, 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 and they get like a certain amount of from the goods then they get to keep the goods or whatever um so they it, it's basically based off that but you play as like a man and a goat in in the shopping cart and you have to get it around like these kind of crazy tracks 
So uh, yeah, another kind of wacky game coming from Billy Goat Entertainment and uh, it's slated for 2019. A Fold Apart was one of the more like mem games that left like a, 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 an imp not an impact, but like it's one I remember seeing. Um, like obviously I remember seeing all the other ones as well, but it was like a game I've been thinking about since I saw it. It's about like, um, it's like a love story about a, di uh, a long distance relationship. And the gameplay is about like, I guess you describe it as a platformer or a puzzle platformer where the woman and the man are on one side of the screen to the other. And you basically have to fold the screen to get them closer together and then get like the guy across the screen or the woman. Um, yeah, it gave me like heavy vibes of the last day of June. Like I feel like it's going to be a sad ending in it. Um, but I just thought the idea of like folding, it's almost like folding a piece of paper over was really unique. And that's kind of why it reminisced with me a little bit. Um, and again, that's coming out next year. Then 35 was Jenny Le Clue Detect 2 was announced for Nintendo Switch. Um, yeah, it's a detective, I guess. Like there was, it was like a, a long video, but um, yeah, it, it looked cool. It was announced for the Switch. That was like the big announcement. I guess you are solving like a mystery of like these um, unusual deaths that are in like this small town and yeah the art style looked pretty nice it was like very colorful and kind of reminded me of like crafts work style art um and yeah so that's another game that's coming to the switch in, in 2019 uh next one up was desert child which i think it said it came out on this comes out on december 11th so it comes out next week um seems like like a side scrolling shooter where you drive hover bikes uh the the video itself the trailer was like really really cool like looked really artsy um you should definitely go watch it because it was really well done probably like the best directed trailer in the entire uh showcase and you know there was some bigger developers there so it was um definitely worth going to check out like it's not a game that i think i'd like to play because i don't really i don't know it looked like a lot of the gameplay was this like hover bikes where you're going and like almost like a side-scrolling shooter, like shooting enemies. Um, but then I guess there is some like kind of story to it. So maybe maybe it's interesting. I think I'll wait for reviews to see if I pick that one up. And the last one, which I thought was quite uh, a worrying announcement, is that Housemark Games are releasing a battle royale called Storm Divers. Um, so if you don't know like the story behind how Housemark Games, they, they originally got like popular making like old school arcade games um, or like twin stick shooter games um and then about a year ago they announced that basically those games aren't selling anymore uh the niche is too small for like their what they want to do with the business so that they were they were like okay we're going to stop making these games now even though they made like some of the best ones in the industry um but yeah people just not enough people were buying them so they've kind of gone back to the the drawing board and yeah they seem to be like jumping on the battle royale train which i guess is either going to be a good thing or a bad thing for them um but i kind of feel like if it's a bad thing then it's going to be a really bad thing for them being an independent developer um like i I feel like we after the success of fortnite we've seen quite a lot of battle royals popping up and like some have died away and and kind of lost all traction like um what was it called lob no not lob breakers what was it called the one that was was a, what originally was going to be the first battle royale on the switch um they were trying to beat fortnite to it and then fortnite beat them and now i feel like i've not heard anything uh anything about the game since which is annoying because i backed it on fig so yeah um so yeah like i don't know you can sign up for a beta now to play storm divers um it looked pretty cool like you you using like um uh jetpacks to fly around the map and um yeah, it looked a bit more, a, l a little bit less stealthy than like, let's say like PUBG where you're kind of like sitting and watching, like it looked a bit more aggressive, which is cool, especially with the, the, with the jetpacks and there was like shield, deployable shields and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I, I hope it's, it's good. Like Housemark do have a pedigree of making really good games. Uh, I hope they're just not like hope, putting all their hopes on um, on this battle royale. Like I could see this story going the way of like uh, what was it, Bosky uh, Studios? You know they made Lord Breakers, which they were basically trying to live off the Overwatch hype, and then that failed. And then they were trying to make their own battle royale, which after about two weeks, they after putting it out in like what was it like Radical 
early mode or whatever they called it. Then after about two weeks of that, they they closed down. So um, yeah, I hope House Mark. I wish them the best, but yeah, this might not be the best idea to establish themselves as like a a, a studio that doesn't just make make arcade or twin stick shooter games. So yeah, so that was um all the games I kind of wanted to talk about from the the showcase. Like I said, I was really impressed at how they managed to get so much into, um, I think it was 69 minutes, which is hilarious actually now that I think about that. Uh, yeah, 67 games in 69 minutes. Um, yeah, really proud of the guys. Like, uh, for the, they kind of, they like Greg said it on a whim and then it turned into like this huge thing and they had like the whole industry looking at them. Um, you know, looking through all in like Nintendo Life and Nintendo Everything and IGN, like all these announcements made it onto there. So yeah, it's like the probably like the biggest thing they've done, um, and definitely like the most important. Like I don't know if they'll do it again because I think it was a like I can imagine it being very stressful. But uh, yeah, it was really cool. Like I'll I'll um I'll link it link the video in the description uh, so you guys can watch it like I said it's only an, it's only just over an hour and it's definitely worth watching because there were some really cool games there so yeah that was uh, the, the showcase and the second thing I wanted to talk about was actually what I've been playing this week and I've just been playing one game I've been uh, dipping in and out of Warframe um, but I've not really put that much time into it but I have been playing a lot of Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom which um, yeah is a really awesome game um, I, I actually got like a press release for it like a few months ago because I work with the, the publishers FTG Entertainment um, a couple of times actually because they, they published Ocean Horn on the Switch which I reviewed and Blossom Tales on the Switch which I reviewed like really back in when I started uh, Switch Indie Fix um, and the game then looked really interesting because like as usual it had like really nice art which always attracts me to games. Um, so if you don't know what it is, it's basically a, it's like a 2D side-scrolling platformer with like Metroid Vania elements. Uh, you play as Jin, a young blue-haired hero, whom am among uh, whom along with the rest of the kingdom is turned into an animal by his crazy magician uncle. Uh, Jin is unfortunately turned into a one-eyed pig. Uh, t in an attempt to t what? Oh, sorry. In an attempt to turn everyone in the kingdom back into humans, Jin goes on a quest to find five magical orbs that can undo his uncle's spells. Uh, the orbs are scattered across the Monster Kingdom's beautiful worlds, and to find them, Jin will have to wrestle them from huge bosses that protect them. After beating the boss and claiming the orb, Jin get, then gets the power of the animal, so whatever animal that boss is. Like, so far, I've, fought, I've faced a snake, a frog, and a dragon. So, um, yeah, so you basically then get the power of that, that boss, which, which basically creates like the metroidvania element so each each animal or each monster has a a special move that it can use and and it that those moves basically unlock the uh, parts of the map that you weren't able to get to before so like i said you start off with a pig the pig has like a smell ability where there's like clouds of of scent in the air you can smell and then he'll find like secrets so like it might be a chest or a platform that lets you jump up onto another platform then the snake, um, because it's a snake, it can like stick to walls or s certain walls, like ones that are covered in moss, which means you can then jump up and go up like the side of a wall into a new area. And it's also small, so it means it can fit through um, it can fit through cracks in walls. So it lets you open up new areas. And then the last one, the, the latest one I've unlocked was the frog. Uh, I just unlocked a dragon. I haven't played with it yet. I think it was a dragon. Anyway, the frog has like a tongue that you can use as like a, almost like a, a grappling hook to swing from from ledges and to jump up higher. Um, so yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, the platforming style is is very like old school. Like it's based on um, some of the, I think it was called the Wonder Boy uh, series. Um, but for whatever reason, it, like Wonder Boy came out. I think it was one of the first games on the Switch to be released. Um, Wonder Boy and the Dragon's Trap, uh, which I haven't played yet. But uh, yeah, Monster Boys is is based off that, and uh, yeah, it's it's very old school. Like so far, what I've experienced is that the the puzzles are sorry, the platforms are mostly like puzzles. So it's a lot of like logical, okay, trial and error. Um, throw yourself at the puzzle, see what happens. Okay, that didn't work. I died. Uh, what I really like is that like the developers game Alt Altia. Uh, they've modernized it enough to ensure that there are plenty of checkpoints before difficult um, platforming sections and bosses. 
So if you die, it's not too big of a problem. You can you can just go back to the the section before and you start again and, and fight the boss, which I really like. Um, I've heard though at the end it it does get like very like almost pixel perfect platforming. So I'm not really looking forward to that because I'm not very good at platforming. But um, yeah, I've I've seen on Twitter like people that got it and have reviewed it. I think the game um, the developers or publishers said said it should take about 17 hours to beat. And they're like, oh, it took me like 40 because, I don't know, they, they found it really hard or they really wanted to find all the secrets. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a cool game. Looks amazing. Like the, the cartoon art style is so bright and colorful. Uh, but what I also like is that when you go into like areas like the sewer, it, the light in there is done really well to give it like an eerie feel or a different feel. Like it's not all kid friendly. Like, oh, yeah, look how beautiful it is and how, how bright everything looks. But like some of the darker areas do give off like a, an eerie, eerie feel, and that that's down to the lighting, which is really cool. And um, yeah, if you if you do like collecting things in games, um, you you get like kind of given gold hand over fist all the time in in Monster Boy. Like every time you kill an enemy, you usually get a gold coin. But what I always find usually is like in some games like that, uh, like say I don't know, Shantae, Half Genie Hero, you. You got given gold and i felt like there wasn't that much to spend it on like you, you bought like five items um which improves your stats and then that was it but what i like about this is that like there's there's like weapons you can buy armor shields uh boots uh um amulets like bracelets um so it's really cool like going from finding a new shop and being like okay what can i buy now and okay i, I want a shield but i don't have enough for it so i need to just go and kill a few more enemies until i, I can save up um and yeah like i said it's very generous with the the uh the gold so you you always feel like you have enough to get what you want and if if you don't have enough then it's not too much work to go and uh, actually find some more so yeah after about 10 hours like i really like the game it's uh I, i've seen a lot of other people saying that it's like game of the year material for for like indie games and like yeah i can see it being close to my top 10 if not in the top 10 like it's it's definitely not one of my favorite but it is like a great game to play and I'm I'm definitely enjoying playing it and um if you like old school platformers that uh have been like modernized and look great then yeah you should definitely check out Monster Boy. And the last thing I want to talk about in the conversation section is the Switch Indie Fix Year 2. So uh if you don't know the the first time I ever posted a posted anything on on Switch Indie Fix was December 22nd which is obviously a couple of weeks away. Uh, and that was my review of Golf Story. So because I've like been kind of thinking about the first year and how the first year has gone, like we've we've done a lot, or, or you know I've done a lot. I I, I built the website myself. I, I kind of launched it. Uh, met like a a lot of really awesome people, like you know other content creators, readers, fans, whatever. It's uh, and developers as well. So it's been like a really awesome year. But next year I want everything to be bigger. And I think the problem now is that being a one-man team is kind of holding me back. Like when I look at other sites or other podcasts, um, you know, no one's doing it alone apart from, you know, like YouTubers. But um, so, yeah, my plan is to actually recruit more, st well, recruit staff for Switch IndieFix. So, um, yeah, basically what I, or the positions I want to recruit are some some people, some writers, some reviewers, some video reviewers, and uh, an actual host for the podcast so if you're interested in writing um you and you like writing like long form journalistic articles or quick to top 10 lists about indie games then you should apply for the writer position uh the more creative the article the better just pitch me your idea uh, if you like the idea of being a video game reviewer then and uh you know getting game indie games early and giving your impressions and quickly turning around a review then uh, maybe that would be interesting for you um if you if that does sound interesting but you're more of like a visual person and you like making video content then uh yeah you should apply for the video reviewer uh position because um next year i really want to focus on youtube a bit more uh like right now it's mostly just vod's of the podcast and i want to actually get some like real uh video reviews on there and some other content um so yeah if, if you're good at that if you're good at editing if you're good at uh capturing or if you have the means i should say to capture video content you should do that and the podcast, which I guess is most relevant to some of the people listen, well, to all of you listening, uh, I I do really want to co-host. Like I like doing um, 
I like doing the podcast on my own as well because it's much simpler. You know, there's a lot less editing. There's a lot less technical problems. Um, but I always feel like the, the quality of the content is always way better when there's someone else here to have someone else's opinion, to have a conversation. Um, and there are like, I know there are a lot of you who will be saying, oh, well, I want to come on the podcast and blah, 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 which I know you do. And I like, I really want to have people on. Um, but I need, I, I really want someone who is here like every episode. And because of that, like I, I'd ideally like someone who is based in Europe because the time schedule is it's much easier with the same time zone to schedule to make the podcast um yeah because of my kind of private life i don't always have a set time to do the podcast like usually i record it on friday evenings or friday afternoon um but like today like i say it's sunday i've been busy this weekend so i've not been able to record it so i'm doing it now on sunday night um and there's also the the generation eight podcast which i launched so if you're a pokemon fan you should uh, maybe go check out generation eight on whichever podcast uh service you're listening to this on um so yeah so that's like another thing i have to kind of think about too which is still part of switch indie fix but is like its own thing i haven't really worked out what it is yet um so yeah so if you if you are europe based and you you've had some like maybe podcasting experience or youtube experience like you're used to talking into a mic you're used to kind of carrying a conversation or at least starting a conversation then uh, yeah please apply for the positions and the easiest way to apply is to just send me an email at uh, so at adam at switchindiefix.com uh, if you're interested in being a writer, a reviewer, video reviewer or co-host. Uh, just remember that and just so you know, like the none of the positions are paid because I don't make any money on the website. So yeah, if if you are like passionate about video games or video games like indie games on the Nintendo Switch and you're a passionate writer or you're a passionate content creator and you want to, I don't know, you, you, you're, you listen to the, to the web, uh, to the podcast, you, you read this website and you want to be part of that too, uh, then please apply. And like, I understand some people say, oh, well, why should I work, do all this work if uh, I'm not getting paid, which I do, I do understand. Uh, but for me, like I'm not getting paid either. And the experience I've had setting up the website so far and running it has been like really awesome and really rewarding. Like I've learned so many new skills, you know, I've met so many new people, people and um, I've even got to play some, some indie games early and get uh, some indie games for free. So yeah, if that sounds appealing to you, then please send me an email. And actually guys, you know what? I think we're going to skip section three of the podcast this week uh, because uh like I said, it's the questions, but I think I'm going to save them for next week because that was, we're at like an hour already. And I, I think that's a good time to kind of tail off the podcast. So I hope you enjoyed today. Uh, like I said, if you didn't watch the, the, the kind of funny game showcase, you definitely should check it out um, because there was a bunch of indies shown there. Uh, like I said, I, I only listed the ones that I f were relevant to switch indie fix and like, which I thought were, were appealing. Uh, just a reminder that the podcast is brought to you by switch indie forward slash discord. Um, the Discord has had like uh, an influx of, of new members the last couple of weeks because of the Switch Indie Fix Game Awards, which I, I've been running. Um, and actually, I actually just posted the, the winners. So you, if you want to find out which content creator won the best content creator, which, which was the best indie game of the year, the best like strategy game of the year, make sure you check out switchindiefix.com. And yeah, if you want to talk about indie games on the Nintendo Switch, then you should go to switchindiefix.com forward slash Discord. Um, so thank you to everyone that has been watching and listening. Uh, like I say, uh, this one is, is, I've been in the kitchen. So if I sound a little bit different, that's why, uh, the podcasts will go up, uh, later today on Apple podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube as soon as I can. Uh, and be sure to check out, like I said, next week, um, is my Warframe review and there'll be also another post going up, um, which I hope is, is, is supposed to be very, I want it to be very helpful to new switch owners. So, uh, keep an eye out for that. So thank you all for watching guys and for listening. I really appreciate it. Like I said, if any of those positions sound interesting, make sure you send me an email. And uh, if not, then I'll see you all next week. Thanks a lot for, uh, for listening. Bye-bye.